Hello, I hope you're doing great. Today we are going to continue talking about Blazor Web Assembly. In this occasion, we are going to talk specifically about localization for data annotations in Blazor Web Assembly projects. Now, before we continue, please remember to click to visit fairplaytube.btiacostarica.com, click the Buy Me a Coffee and select a donation amount. This way you can help keep the videos and projects free for you. Let's continue. So, um, when we are doing like forms entry, right, where you have text fields, I usually need to validate that the fields are not empty, that the data in some of the fields is numeric, that it is um, inside a range, right, things like that. So, you do that with data annotations. Data annotations are basically attributes that you mark your properties with, and those attributes will validate specific things. You have the required attribute for specifying that this field is going to be required. We have the string, link, a string length attribute to specify the maximum length of a string um, we have the range attribute to specify the range and numeric value will allow and there are like custom expressions url attributes right and other kind of attributes you can also even create your own attributes to validate additional things now the default attributes basically they are english based right but you can uh, take advantage of your resource files when you have resource files to do the localization. You will do something like this. This has some parameters, right? And you have, well, if you want to specify a static error message, you will put the error in there, right? But you can also use like error resource name. You put in here the name of a property and then you put here type of I don't know uh, something like that that I'm just uh, doing some types there for letting you know what will be so how it will work so basically when you put this and an error occurs it will go to this type and it will look a static property with this name and the value of that property is going to be what it's going to be printed so the problem with that is that if you do not if you are using something like database driven resources uh, you will not have a static files resx files for your data you will actually be having something like the i string localizer and the i string localizer will be the one uh, returning your values so this one will not work will not work with the string localizer at least the way it is at the moment now there is a hack that you can do so um blazor still does not fully support data annotations localization but you can actually do some work around on that in your program dots yes well you already have registered the iString localizer factory and this basically has all of the configuration to retrieve the um, localization items from an api call and the api call actually retrieves the items from the database um, this is only executed in the uh, the way I have it, that will only be executed once because the this is going to be a singleton and I have something else in there. We, we are going to see. Uh, we have the API localizer. Now, the iString localizer.factory, it has a method create that allows you to create the localizer instance 
that you have and you can pass a type in there so you will see that at the end of this program.cs file basically what i did is i created a new variable named localizer factory which is going to be equal to the services get required service i string localizer factory i am doing this after the build because after this i know i get the host and i know that the host already have all of the services configured this will give me an instance of the api localizer factory right and then what we do is we take that localizer factory we create it and see that here I have custom localization dot upload video model localizer. This is a class that it's going to have all of the required localizing configuration for the upload video model class. So that's actually the hack I was telling you about. So the property is actually a nice string localizer of upload video model localizer. So I have to convert it in here with the else, else keyword, right? And you will see that I can go to the upload video model localizer. This one has the technique that we did to automatically insert the resource keys in the database, at least the default values, right? So it inserts all of this, right? Uh, with this, this as a key and this as a value, right? And now the hack that we did in here is basically we have some static string properties and the static string properties basically are going to retrieve the specified key from the localizer that we assign in the program.cs, which is an static, an static class right so in order to see how that works you will see that i already have something in here so we see that for the name i have the required attribute where the error message resource name it's equal to the video name required and i am using the name of you so i don't have hard-coded strings in here then the error message resource type is going to be upload video model localizer. So basically what it does is if this field is required and the validation fails, it will look for this property in this class. This property will look for the item um, name, video name required text field or actually video name required test right inside the localizer and it will return the error value and that is what you will do for all of the fields in the case of things like a string length you will have something like description too long right and if you go here you will see that description too long it gets it from the description too long text key and it has like the default values description must be shorter than and we put the one or two to um the one to replace right this will be replaced with the actual size that we specified in the string length attribute and in the case of ranges you will have things like price must be between one and two for the price right and in the case of the price it will give you in this case, it will give you um, between zero and 100. So that's one of the ways in which you can create um, the localization of data annotations in Blazor Web Assembly. It is a hack that you can do at the moment because data annotations, as I was saying, or data annotations localization is not yet fully supported on Blazor. However, it is a workaround that is actually working. It's working pretty good, right? So I hope this has been useful. Thank you very much. And please remember to support me in the Buy Me A Coffee page. Have a great day.